Hey guys, how you doing? How's everyone doing? I haven't been here for I think 14 days, two weeks ish. So again, it's 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 a bit weird being here in front of the camera, being live. But how's everyone doing? I see there's three people already. Wow. That's an achievement. <laughs> So come on, say hi in the chat. Who's here? I'm really interested. Ah, Jan Simon, hello boy. Great. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, what, what, what have you learned? What have you been working on? Tell me. Super tired, but great. Uh, I see, I see. By the way, is the music all right? Is the microphone all right? Lately, I was doing some new spells for my Naruto in overlay. Ah, I see. Yeah. So still working on on Naruto. Yep, music is okay. Great. Great. Reusek, yo! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, I have some last plans with him. Uh, and what are, what are those plans, if I may ask? And then I will move to another stuff. And what is the stuff? I need to order more animations. Order more animations? You, you, you buy those animations? I thought you you were making them yourself. I'm um, all right. Oh, well, that's that that's nice. I'm also all right. It's a bit toasty in here. Uh, before I I st I, st uh, I I went online. Um, I mean live. Um. Uh, you know, I, I opened uh, a window here, you know, so uh, th th there's a fresh air and it, it was a, a bit cold. So I put on my poncho, but now it's it's getting a bit hot. I use animation then spine from some pro. Ah, I see. I see. From Fiverr. Ah. And how much does uh, like one animation, like an, I don't know, like an average animation cost? That there will be something like scrolls where people can write text. Whoa, nice! <laughs> you 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 really love you know uh, ha having fun with all all, all those uh, automations and and uh, Naruto and and stuff like that, right? I can really tell that, that that you really really enjoy that. And what about you, Ray? What what have you been working on? Apart from the microcontroller that I've seen yesterday, of course. Don't ask about price. Yeah, it's super fun. I love to involve people in con in controlling my stream. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fun. I mean, I'm I'm personally not 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 a big fan of that, but I can see why other people might enjoy that. All right, all right. So. Um, what are we gonna work on today? Um, today we're gonna work on, um, I'd like to say simple event emitter, but we'll see. Um, because, yeah, we could create the most simple event emitter there is, which is just going to be a simple pop pops up implementation, you know. But we want a bit more... Uh, from that because we want to be actually um, like production ready like like we want that thing to be actually useful so I I fear that um, you know making it as simple as possible will be fun but not very useful so we will have to find the balance uh, I was playing COD until 5 a.m. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Modern Warfare 2 
And uh, how, how's the new card? I'm, I'm really interested in that. I, I, I used to play it competitively, so uh, I, I don't use that. I, I don't I don't do that anymore because you know addictions. But <laughs> uh, I always like to uh, you know listen to other people talk about my past addictions. What have you been doing in Liberets? So already, already. Um, let's create a, a little, little little file here, or maybe, maybe okay. Let's let's do it here. Let's do it here. So what we want to do, let's say JavaScript, because for now we we will be using JavaScript because we don't want to spend too much time on thinking about the types and when when it, really when it comes to libraries. Uh, and TypeScript library specifically, the types are usually the most, the the, the, the hardest part. Uh, so we really don't want to think about that. We just want to make it work. And then when we are sure it works and we have the tests for it, then we will um, start adding the types. Um, and also we will be uh, using pipes and... TypeScript is notoriously, uh, or or in ty in TypeScript, it, it's it's notoriously known that you cannot really implement pipe. It, the 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 pipe implementation will always be limited by some arbitrary number of functions that you can pass into it. So that's that's not really nice. <laughs> uh, I was playing call one, two, and four a lot. Yeah, yeah, I. My most played card is Modern Warfare Three. I've spent uh, a lot, a lot of time there. <laughs> it's nice. I mean, it's not Blackout. What's Blackout? We have been on Invex competition with my team on card two. Ooh, nice. Oh, my my friend had but I see, I see. JS problem on my. <laughs> Of future me, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I I don't care about TypeScript right now. That that's that's going to, uh, be my, my my future me. That that's going to have to you know implement that. So, uh, let's let's just not think about it right now. All right. So, um, the most simple implementation of an event image. Okay. Does does everyone know what an event emitter is and why it is useful? I mean, that, that's that's the first question. That if there is anyone who doesn't know, we have to you know make this clear, because then no nothing will make sense. So that, that does everyone know? Absolutely no. Oh yeah, that, okay, so that, that that's great. So uh, it, it was a good uh, move to, to 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 ask ask about this. Okay. So at least there's one person who doesn't know what event emitters is. Event I know, emitter I I I know. Together, yeah. W well, that's just um, a fancy name, basically, um, because y you can name this uh, in many different uh, ways. You can say, okay, this is event emitter. This is an event. This is an event stream. This is a stream. This is uh, a an event bus or message bus. So that's 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 six already six yeah um, so all, all of these things are the same the same thing fundamentally they don't differ in any way really uh, so it's some event handling system pops up yeah yeah and and pops up is the most basic implementation of an event emitter or event stream or stream of events whatever yeah I, I just like the event emitter. Uh, name so so I, so I'm gonna use that but uh, really it's it's uh, either one of those that, that that I named so yeah so the the simplest pops up so let's say um, I, I have my a which is which is uh, which is an event let's call it an event and it's going to um, be of type number and then when I want to uh, I, I I want to subscribe to it and I want to maybe say okay um, the user, um, user passed this number, okay? And then uh, I can maybe create a loop where I 
uh, loop from zero up until nine. Oh, not O. I want I. And then I can just do a pop and I publish the um, value into all of those subscriptions. So that, that, that could be many, many subscriptions and they could be anywhere, like literally anywhere in the system. Uh, I just have to Im Im import this event and then I can uh, subscribe on it. So it's internal message bus only for one type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus plus I only uh, I plus plus. No, this is actually faster in JavaScript by like, I don't know, 5% max. Uh, and the reason why that is, uh, is that when you do plus plus something or minus minus something, it uses the same uh, like piece in memory and it just, you know, increments and, and decrements. But when you do I plus plus or I minus minus, um, it creates a copy of that piece of memory um, somewhere else and that uses that reference. So this is a little, little, little tiny bit faster. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, that's that's uh, entirely specific to, to JavaScript. I guess it wouldn't work in other languages. Yeah, okay. So um, you can subscribe and uh, as many times as you want and then you uh, publish the values. And how that works internally is uh, very, very easy. You create... Uh, fuck, uh, you create an event, which basically, basically, um, just has these listeners, which is a new set. Okay, and then, then, it, then it returns the, the functions, you know, so, so here you would have, you would have your sub and uh, here you would have your little pop. Okay, so this is basically the implementation. Of course, we would have to implement these two functions, but let, let's not think about that for now. Uh, let, let's imagine those are already implemented. So that's basically the implementation. And what, what happens here, um, so let's let's just uh, create a draft of, of that implementation, is that we basically just go over uh, the listeners just like this. And we just call each listener with the value that we provide here. So we just iterate over all the listeners that this particular event has and we pass the values. That's all. Nothing crazy. That's some deep stuff. Yeah. But it makes sense. Yeah, true. There's a lot of these deep secret-ish things in JavaScript. Um, and most of the time, times they don't really make sense. Um, but yeah, there, there's a, a lot of these things. By the way, guys, do you know the two books? Uh, JavaScript Good Parts and JavaScript Bad Parts? Uh, oh... Oh, I think it's JavaScript. No, it's just JavaScript, and then there's JavaScript good parts. And the JavaScript is like that, this, this, this thick, and the good parts is like this thin. <laughs> so that's that's that that's a nice joke, you know. <laughs> like that, there's uh, not many good parts in, in JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. So is this is this clear how event emitters or pop ups um, in essence work? Because we will be implementing a pop up in the event emitter, but it's going to be an upgraded version of this, uh, a, a, a little more advanced version. But basically, it's going to be doing this. Oh, and, and, and the sub would be implemented as uh, basically you have the listener here, and what you do is just listeners add listener. Okay, that's that's basically all. You know, that, that, that there's no magic here. Nope, nope. What, what, nope. It, 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 it's, it's still not clear. Is this still not clear? No, it was about the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, so th this is clear. We we are all on the same page. This is kind of clear. Okay, 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 great. So that's that's the main idea of events or observables. Okay, we, we could call this observable, and then we would observe that that observable, which is which would be basically subscribing to that event, and then we would be, I don't know, sending data in or triggering that observer or whatever. The names really uh, don't, don't matter. It's still the same concept. So yeah, um, so that's the the basics. Uh, uh, yeah, I, f <laughs> I forgot to um, translate the, the the check messages to, to English. But uh, w whatever. Uh, let's welcome Nosa more to based uh, in our little family. So. Uh, no some more. How we doing? Uh, by the way, interesting, in interested Nick. I don't know how, how I should pronounce that. No some more. No some more. Too based. All right. So that was the simplest uh, of 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 the simple. But uh, what we want is a production ready, production grade um, event emitter. So, what 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 does it really mean? Because with uh, the event emitter that we we've just implemented, um, we can't really do much. Or, I mean, we can do anything really. But yeah, production. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I meant yeah, like useful. Okay, let's let's maybe change that to being useful and easy to use because um, let's say I have a click event okay so I have I have click and it's an event of something um, and let's uh, let's have let's have X X uh, number Y number okay and and now um, uh, the event is going to just pass the information okay so what I mean by that is that when I when I publish into that event um, I can only um, do this and I can do anything else okay so uh, I can't debounce this thing I can't filter uh, the data I can't map it I can't I don't know sort it I, I can do anything with it uh, in the definition of the click, but sure, I can I can do it somewhere else. But it's the same problem we have with um, classes. You know, um, let's say I have class A, and it does something something here. Okay, private uh, AA is something, and here we are. Um, I don't know, instantiating B with something and then call in something here. And now when we look into the class A, we also see logic of B. So really, um, when we would look into the file of the class B, we wouldn't see um, like all the logic in, uh, regarding the class B because the logic would live somewhere else, maybe in this class A and class C and class D. So what we want to do is to have all the logic concerning, you know, our like logical pieces to be in place, like in line uh, at the place of um, creation. So what we would really want to do is instead, um, instead of do doing it maybe here, um, so what I mean by that is, okay, we, we have this, we have this data, which is essentially this. Okay, is this, and then here we do the filtering and mapping and debouncing. So um, imagine that this is in some kind of uh, function. Okay. So this is inside. It's inside of a function, and here we would um, probably create uh, a timeout, um, which has to be immutable. 
So we would create a timeout. Um, now we would, uh, we would, I don't know, set the timeout and then uh, here we would uh, maybe do some filtering. So we would do like if data X is more than one, then we continue, you know, and we, when we put, when we put this here, and then maybe we have a different filter, uh, and for some reason, or maybe we, we have we have mapping. So here we we want x to really be data x times two, and then again we do some filtering after that. So uh, let's say if x now is I don't know um, divisible by two, or is 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 even. Okay, and this is a huge mess, you know? This is a huge mess. I think we, we can all agree that this is a huge mess. And not only because we have, um, you know, if statements here and, and we basically map by creating new variables and uh, and stuff like that. But when I look um, at this definition of an event called click, I don't really know how it works. I don't know all the all the conditions that the 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 input data ha uh, that, that you know I, I just don't know anything about the click and of course um of course this would be in in a different file okay so uh we, we wouldn't you know see uh, both of these codes of blocks uh, at the same time so we would have to search for how really the click works and the obvious thing uh, is that we would have different, um, different, or, or the, the click could work in different ways, because there re really isn't any like one source of truth. But the s sources of truth are many, in different lo uh, locations in in your uh, project. So that's not good. We we don't want that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we are coming to some dependency injection shares. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. S s well, something like that. Um, I mean, when it comes to classes, uh, l l like I showed earlier, that would be true. That would be true. Um, but here, we don't really have to do any dependency injection. Um, instead, we utilize this uh, empty parentheses here for passing in um, uh, the configuration or the default mapping. Yeah, we can we can call it a default mapping. Uh, lambda function, yeah. Uh, and better than lambda function, we want to have a pipe. Okay, so why do we want to have a pipe? Because if we had just one lambda function, then okay, yeah, we, we have this lambda function, we have the input that we're getting, and now, again, we can create many ifs, you know, um, inside ifs, and uh, I don't know, again, inside <laughs> ifs. So, yes, we've solved one problem, but we still have this ugliness, this uh, very unclear, uh, unclean code. Can you explain pipes? Yeah. Absolutely, we are slowly get, getting there. So this is the reason why we want pipes, why we why we won't settle for just a simple lambda function. So what we really want is to have a pipe. And how does a pipe work, you ask? Well, good question. Um, so let's say, uh, I don't know, test pipe. And the test pipe is going to be a pipe um, which is going to get some um, input. So let's say the pipe is going to uh, get number and it's going to um, it's going to output a string. So first, we maybe want to filter um, if the number that we are getting is again divisible by two. So only 
uh, so only if, if the input number is divis divisible by two, then the other functions are going to be executed. So then maybe we want to map it. So let's say we want to, I don't know, for some reason, map it into a tuple of the same numbers. I don't know. Um, and then we want to maybe do some uh, control flow here. So if, I don't know, something here, then we do the first thing. So first, no, first. Or do we do the second thing? So we can, you know, conditionally map something based on some kind of condition. And I would argue that this is much more readable than the the many ifs, elses, um, for loops and stuff like that. And then the way I would use this is basically just say, okay, test pipe. And now I have this configuration loaded in here and I pass in, I don't know, three. So obviously we would get, um, well, depending on the on the implementation of the pipe, we would um, get either an error uh, saying that okay we, we we couldn't you know go past past this line, or we would get undefined or maybe some symbol like none um, or something like that. Um, so that's how pipes basically work. So is that clear? Oh, and I forgot. Uh, I have a coffee here, so I, I should I, su I should drink that first before it gets cold. <laughs> hmm. And we could also. Um, put pipes into pipes. So if you want to, you know, uh, have okay. If, so if maybe we have some some um, I don't know string string filter pipe. Okay, and we we have the definition here, um, and we want to use it somewhere else. So uh, maybe instead of filtering here, we would uh, we would put it just. We, put it straight in here so we would have basically pipes and pipes so we can reuse it so there's no du uh, du duplicate code not yet sure it's like function which you can add into lambda for event well it doesn't it doesn't have to be inside an event uh, I mean um, we are going to use it inside an event but really it can be used um, anywhere so if you have some some kind of logic that you know that um, you know fil filters, so again put put this back. That filters uh, based on or d does does something based on uh, if the number is divisible by two, then it um, w you would create a new constant that would be mapping of that um, of that uh, number after the filter. And then you would have if else, and depending on this condition, you would do this or that. And you don't really want to like write it in that way. You want to have a more concise way, more like a declarative way of of that. So so you would use pipe for that. Oh, finally got it. Thanks. My brain is slow after that. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. Okay. So that's the main idea of pipes and we are going to utilize pipes a lot here um, so let's say we have a click and we don't want to react if the if the X and Y is outside of some kind of bounds okay so we maybe want to react only um, uh, on like some arbitrary sized window inside our main window. So what we would do is we would say, okay, filter uh, this thing. We want uh, the X and Y. And let's say we want to um, do other stuff if um, X is, I don't know, bigger than 
uh, bigger than uh, 600, 600, and the Y is, I don't know, smaller than two, two, 1200. Okay, so done. Now maybe we want to map it. So what we would do if is that we would take this and we might want to, for some reason, map it into a string. So what we would do is just do this. Okay, easy. Very declarative way of defining uh, our uh, business logic. Um, and then uh, we might have some kind of switch or match or um, if else. And again, based on what we get here, so we get the value. And let's say if the X and Y um, with uh, this symbol together have length um, of three, which means that these numbers are less than um, 10, then we don't want to do anything. So, or maybe we, we want to do a different thing. So um, what we would do here is uh, say when V, uh, I mean V length is three, then we do this. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know what what this would be. So let's let, let's not implement this. But the idea is that we would do something different with the value, and that would be the output of the if else, or and of the pipe, meaning it would be the output of the event. So then, when I uh, say click subscribe, I am getting. Uh, uh, the value only if it uh, went through this and uh, returned true, so the filter returned true, then it gets mapped and then uh, we do this uh, if else logic and, and depending on what will be here, we would get uh, a, a different result. And that's what we get here. Okay? But uh, we are not stopping here with the pipes because here um, again we, we you, you can think about this as some kind of a function with with, with some uh, basic um, type of input output you know something like that something, something like that and we have the same same type here so we can really just do a console log and just log the value. Or we can pass the pipe again and do something, some kind of logic that is independent um, of this like general logic of the event itself. So now we've, um, uh, we, 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 previously we had just one logic and it, and it lived um, it would live here near the near the sub, but now we've extracted a part of that logic into the definition of the of the event. So that's the logic that is sh that would be shared in um, all of the subs, basically. So we now have no duplication, but previously we would have duplication in all those places that would implement this um, shared logic. And then we have the individual logic of the individual subscribes. So we would put it here. So maybe here, um, we also want to do some filtering and react only if that condition is met. Can I ask you a little bit out of topic? How Matt works in JS, some speed explanation. Oh, wait. So if it's out of boundaries, we don't get event return. That's handy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if if this returns false, then these functions don't even get executed and we, um, in this case, get undefined back. And we want, we, we know that undefined means don't do anything, like don't, don't call the listeners. So we, so this, um, uh, this function wouldn't even get executed. So the, the value wouldn't even get to the subscribers. Um, and about the maps in, in JavaScript, 
Um, uh, do you mean maps as in data structure, like uh, n new map um, versus object, or do you mean map as in like mapping things? So I have an array and I map it, or I have an array and I do some kind of for loop and map it, map it that way. So w which, which one of these do, do you mean? Yes, as an object, I think. So as, as a data structure. So you, you're asking what was the difference between map and uh, object, right? Uh, okay, so return undefined means no emitted event. Yeah, in this particular implementation, uh, it, it, it means that. But really, you can use whatever value you want, or you can just throw an error and then catch it somewhere and, and uh, based on that, do nothing. So it's really up to you how you implement uh, this logic of not triggering the listeners if you know the conditions are not met. Not met. Yes, as an object, I think yes, yes, I think so. Um, yeah. Um, good question. Uh, the thing in JavaScript is that when you have an object, it shouldn't grow. It should be static when it comes to uh, the keys, the, the the properties. So um, I don't know. We we would have you know uh, A, B, and C. And if, if this is all all you need, then use an object. Okay. But if you want to keep you know dynamically keep adding or deleting um, your ABCs then you would use map because the the object the, the the way it's implemented somewhere behind the scenes is it's 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 static and whenever you change it whenever you delete something from it or add something into it uh it basically has to copy all the data into a new object and then um delete that that data from from memory and that's kind of an expensive operation so you don't really want to do that so that's wh where maps or hash maps but really maps uh, are hash maps on uh, you know behind the scenes oh, okay so with map you can add more objects you can add more uh, um, items yeah in, into it remove some some item yeah and thing thing may, maybe remove some objects in map, it's like hash map. Yeah, it it is a hash map. Yes, yes, absolutely. And also one one good thing is, or uh, a thing that is good to note is, is that here in object, object when it comes to keys uh, and their type, they can be either string or symbol, nothing else. But if you want, for example, a function to be a key then you have to use a map because map is very similar to set but of course it also has uh, the, the value it, it, it's not just keys so whatever kind of a key you can put into set you can put it into the maps keys also so ho hope that's that's clear So whenever you you see something like this, const a equals empty object, and then you you do something here, uh, and then you do a I don't know s s key equals something, then this is basically an, an anti pattern because uh, it's uh, too expensive to compute. So really, this should be uh, a new map. And here you should be setting that map, that 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 item based on a key and adding the value. So there's no you know copying data over and recreating objects uh, from the scratch again and again and again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's get back to subscribing. 
this is super good to know. I definitely use this badly somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's normal. N not many people know this. As, as I said, these are the tricky parts of JavaScript that not many people know. Um, and it's really good to know about them because then you, you might create a much more predictable kind of a software. Yeah, let, let's put it that way. I, I don't really want to label it as good or bad, but when you, for example, use maps over objects in these cases where it clearly benefits uh, maps, then it's more predictable when it comes to the performance because uh, maps would basically be uh, linear when, when it comes to uh, the size to proportion of uh, the performance, the performance to, to, to data. But when it comes to objects, it would be exponential, exponential growth. <clears throat> okay, um, so we, we, we could use the same functions that we use here. So we could filter, we could map, we could if else, we could debounce, we could do anything we did here, also in here. But now we have the advantage of um, having two different pieces of code, d different pieces of logic. And before we had just one. So this is this is much better. So that's that's uh, why I said like more like production great or production ready, uh, because in because production usually means complex big um, projects that span across many many years, uh, and many different people work on them and and so on and so and, and so forth. So really, what what you want is this uh, uh, clear way. Of defining things and working with, with the code base and um, by that logic this is much better this is much more like production ready yeah thanks uh, th thank you good f good infos yeah okay I'll check my code later <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right so again here we could you know filter something or uh, debounce after filtering debounce uh, I don't know, 250 or so something like that. Um, so yeah, does anyone have any questions regarding this? And of course, there, there will be the, 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 the typical um, boring methods of events, which is like has. So we we check if if it has this this function. Uh, we check the the, the size. Um, we can clear, you know, um, all the listeners and stuff like that. But I, I I don't think we need to talk about these because the as I said as I said these are boring and there's nothing really interesting uh, about them. No, clean out for me. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, so that's the theory. Now let's jump into the code and start implementing this. And um, like I said, the event implementation is really, really simple. It's just a few lines of code. But the most um, complex thing here is the pipe, actually. And the helper functions here, you know. So what we want to do first is to implement the pipe and some of these uh, functions, and then implement the event. Okay. So the, the the hardest thing first, and and the 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 easiest thing last. All right. So let's jump into here. Let's cr create index.js. Like I said, we are not going to be thinking about types today and let's start implementing so there are a couple of ways we could implement pipes in general so let's let's look at the like the most basic implementation of a pipe so we do have a pipe we have functions which is yeah let, let, let's not even spread them okay 
because spreading is is too too complex. Not, not you know not uh, you know your your average junior wouldn't know about spreading things uh, or arguments in functions. So so let's just uh, say that the function is an array of of functions. Um, and what we would do is we would just say okay, f um, um, yeah, and and then we we have we have value, and then what we would do is we would say okay, functions reduce. We have the accumulator, the uh, the value, and what we do is basic. Um, I mean, uh, function. So what we do is we basically yeah we we set we set the value here so the accumulator will be here yeah and then we just call it call it here right yeah the accumulator yeah yeah okay so this is the easiest implementation of a pipe spread <laughs> <laughs> no, not not again. Spread me, daddy. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we want no spreading. No spreading for me right now. So this is the easiest implementation. But uh, what this does is that we can't really have any filtering here. This is a map only pipe because we, we, we don't care we, if, if there if if we you know um get false so we would have to you know kind of work around that um and we don't really want to do that so um so yeah uh and w what i what i really mean by that is okay imagine we have we have this filter um where we where we again say uh if the value is divisible divisible by 2 and then what we get here on the next line is either true or false. So we would have to do something like if else. Um, if else value equals true. And now we do the mapping here. So uh, we map... Um, yeah, yeah, and... and, and yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we, we would have to do two things. Two things, not just one thing. We would have to create a tuple here with the result of the condition and the value because we need the value later on. So, uh, we would uh, call this predicate value, and if the value equals true, then we pass the value. If not, then we just uh yeah we, we we still yeah i guess hmm yeah okay and now 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 it's getting complicated <laughs> but the the main idea is that we would have to you know work around this uh this constraint so what we really want to do is to um give control over um, you know, passing the the value into the next function to each one of those functions. So what I mean by that is that let's not um, use you know these these abstracted away functions. So let's 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 take a peek at uh, inside of them. So again, let's create the filtering here. So we would have the value and then next and what we would do is that um so if um yeah and the yeah and the the value i guess here no the the predicate yeah the predicate so if the predicate with this value then we pass the value and if not, then we just don't pass the value into the next, into the next function, okay? And if there's no next function, then we just return the value. 
So that's that's basically the the logic. So again, here let, let's let's create um, map. So next, we want the mapping function, and we basically just return. Um, we say next function with the value. Yeah, that's that's all. So that's 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 our map here. So is this distinction between the the simplest implementation of of pipe and this a bit more advanced one clear? Like wh why we want it to be actually a bit a bit more complex? You might argue that um, we don't really need the next here. And that we could just um, return the values. So if um, the predicate with the value, then we return the value. And if, if not, then we return undefined, which, like I said, is going to be our secret value that means nothing. And here we would uh, we would just do this. Uh, sorry, I must go. Uh, our new dog was... Dog? Was deployed... You mean like Docker? Was deployed by his mother yesterday? Depl <laughs> oh, do do the dog was deployed by his mother yesterday. So we're going to check on him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. See, see ya. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's that's what 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 happens when someone is uh, a developer for too long. You get disconnected from from the reality, and you st you start you know saying that people spawn and despawn, or they they deploy, or that they that they crashed and some stuff, stuff like that. Super true, yeah. So yeah, we could do it this way, and then check um, on each iteration if the value is undefined or not uh fucking npcs in story <laughs> yeah <clears throat> um but um it's not it's not um it's not very cheap to check on each iteration for each um for each publish you know so instead we we want to um yeah, how, how, how would I describe this? Yeah, we, we're basically duplicating checking. Because here we have some kind of logic that, that says, if something, then yes, go ahead and execute the next function. Or if there's no other, uh, other function after after this one, then return, return the value and pass it into the listeners. But then if we change, change that from the next v like, like we had before and we do this then uh one level um higher we again have to check for undefined but we well, you know from from the perspective of this this single function we already already know that we shouldn't you know um call the other function because clearly we've uh we, we we don't want that, you know, because here we, we have this one condition that clearly states that. So really, it's it's a duplication of checking things. So we 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 really don't want that. So that's why we use this generator g generator ish um, pattern. So yeah, so this is this this is how how it should look. Okay, great. So uh, maybe maybe keep this here. Um, I'm just gonna um, comment it out, and let's keep it here so so we see what is our goal here, uh, or, the, or the goal like usage when it comes to the pipes, not the implementation. That's that's what we are going to implement now. Uh, so uh, up to this point, is everything clear to everyone? I don't want anyone to be lost because then it's really boring, you know, for you when when you don't really understand what's going on. So I want everyone to be, uh, uh, you know, what's what was the phrase? 
on the same boat <laughs> on board <laughs> i don't know uh d shorkin yo yo what's up how you doing a first time cheddar D <laughs> oh come on come on did i re did, did i really again say these these okay <laughs> nice i'm doing good uh by the way where are you from because mo most of our uh viewers are from czech republic because i i used to stream in czech so i'm, I'm really interested Okay, so let's start creating pipe. So here in 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 this uh, more advanced implementation of pipe, yes, we are going to spread. We're gonna spread them lag. Uh, I mean functions, you know, because we like spreading those functions. Uh, Dimitri, ah, Dimitri Shorkin, Shorkin. That's, that sounds a bit like shark. I'm from Russia. Uh, I see. Um, and are you a developer yourself? Or are you just interested in, in development? Okay, so here we have our functions. Let's call it just fs. Okay, so we have our functions and then we want our our value. So two things we need to do here. I mean, we don't really need to do one of those, but still, let's let's do it uh, f uh, as a as as part of the uh, of optimization. Um, so we want to um, create length. Uh, okay, let's let's just call it L uh, of fs. So fs length. Okay, we, we, we cache it so we can then uh, just use this and don't have to, you know, recompute it and and uh, just depend on JavaScript uh, being smart and caching it itself. I have eight years experience of JavaScript. Ah, nice. A little bit colder. Yeah, that's that's nice. Yeah, I, I also have about eight years of experience with JavaScript. So we are uh, on the same level, I guess. And do you do you watch um, programmers stream um, often? And then another thing that we need, um, and that's only because I have already kind of implemented this, so so I know we actually need it, and we we will see why a bit later, is that we need an ID of this pipe. Um, it's going to be useful for things that um, um, how would how would I how would I describe this? Um, some some kind of helper functions need to remember the state of the last execution. So, for example, debounce debounce needs to remember that there is some kind of a uh, a timeout that needs to be cancelled and created uh, and then we create a new and Rust enjoys in the chat <laughs> uh, yeah often but your name of stream is so interesting I need to your imp I need to your implementation what, what do you mean but thank you um, I really enjoy implementing uh, reactive things in general and by reactive i mean uh you know events observer patterns pop ups um functional reactive programming and so on i need to see your implementation yeah and uh you've come at the right time because right now uh, uh i'm 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 beginning to you know implement this thing because we we spent uh what like an hour i don't know um just going through the theory but now let's let's get to um to the real thing okay so 
we have our pipe, we have the length, we have the ID, which we're going to use later, and then we have the value. Um, okay, and what we want to do here is to actually make the pipe async. Um, why do we need to make it async? Well, um, there could be, um, for example, the debounce. Okay, so let's let's uh, create debounce right here. So what we would do is to uh, you know set timeout to something, but the timeout it, it, it basically gets skipped. You know, it's it's basically kind of acing. So it sets this it sets the timeout and then it proceeds to you know read other other lines. So so it doesn't actually wait. But we want for these things to be awaited. We want to wait until the last time out. In when we are talking about the debounce, then there will be many uh, timeouts, and the last one, uh, or all of them except for the last one, will be uh, cleared or deleted, and the last one will be executed. And so we want to wait actually for all of those previous uh, timeouts to be cleared by the new, you know, incoming um, uh, execution or incoming data and then execute only the, the last one. So let's say we have 100 milliseconds here, wait time, and we um, executed 10, 10 times in a row, um, 50 milliseconds apart fr from each other. So then that's half a second so um, after 600 milliseconds, we would actually get the data. So we need to wait 600 milliseconds, but we don't want to um, block the main threat, right? So we want to make it async. And for it to be async, we cannot really use, um, you know, async function like this. Uh, because this would be useful only in cases where you are awaiting, like literally using the keyword await. But we cannot really await, you know, set time out. We cannot do that. So what we need to do instead is go one level deeper and create a new promise. You know, that's what basically happens um, behind the scenes when you create an async function. The, a new promise gets created, and the promise has two um, attributes here, two functions, and it's resolve and reject. And in this case, we want just the resolve. We, we don't want reject because, l like I said, we uh, the, the, the way we are going to know that we want to stop the execution is by passing undefined. So... Um, so yeah, so let's just pass undefined and call it a day. Okay, so now what we do... Oh, nice! An an another person! Uh, Gasoil GFX, welcome! Welcome! How are you doing? And thank you for, for the follow. By the way, I have a YouTube channel, but... <laughs> There are no videos yet of of me programming, but there's one one video of me playing shakuhachi, which is a Japanese um, flute. Um, so if you're into that, then uh, be sure to check that out. Hello. Um, again, the same question as for the uh, Dimitri. Um, where are you from? What do you think is superior software engineer or web developer? Um, neither one of those. Uh, I kind of hate these general <laughs> prime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of hate these like, general questions because there's never, you know, a clear winner. That's like asking what is the superior database. Well, depends. Depends on what you need. So, um, software engineer is going to have um, knowledge that your average web developer wouldn't wouldn't have. But the important thing is to if. if the job actually requires that knowledge. So if it does require that knowledge, then of course software engineer is better. But if it doesn't, well, that that 
that completely depends on what uh, um, set of uh, knowledge you need. And maybe this, the, the software engineer doesn't really have that set of knowledge. Uh, best DB is CSV, changed my mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I want to see you uh, creating a uh, CSV uh, replicated, you know, on edge all, all around the globe um, and having non-blocking reads and writes. <laughs> uh, does any one of those jobs have a front-end job? Uh, well, it, it depends. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, you know, th theoretically. So, theoretically... It depends. But I would say you don't need to be a software engineer to um, work on front-end. Because usually front-end doesn't involve anything like really complex or you don't really need that set of knowledge which will be characteristic for a software engineer. So I don't think so. Front-end is just fraction of the... Comp yeah, exactly. It's just a small part. So it would be kind of a waste, you know, using a software engineer with uh, much broader knowledge to just do this, you know, kind of, you know, simple thing. Yeah, but when it comes to backend or um, hardware, you know, then yeah, I think it is. It start or it starts to be beneficial if you are software engineer <laughs> just learn everything yeah just learn everything <laughs> i mean if you have the time then yeah absolutely spend it learning but if you don't then just pick whatever you know fits your uh, set of knowledge okay um so what we need to do here is to um return a promise um Yeah, and we need to create a next function. Yeah, that's what we what the functions are going to um, have as the second argument. Okay. So let's create next. And the next is, it needs a value. And what it's going to do is it's going to check. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we, we need max. We need max. We don't, we don't need the length. We need max, which is going to be uh, the length minus one. Yeah, um, and if... Yeah, okay, and here we need to create the i, which is going to be by default minus one. The reason is that we need to call it here with the value. Okay, now if, if the value that we are passing equals undefined, that we want to resolve the whole thing with undefined um, else if value no um, i equals maximum max then we resolve it with the current value and if even that is not true so it's else um, we want to call the function. So what we want to do is say, okay, let's grab the functions. Let's grab the next function. So that's why we, we start with minus one here. And we want to pass, well, actually three things. Uh, there's going to be value next and ID. So what we want to do is we want to pass the value the next itself 
So we are pa in inside next we are passing reference to basically itself and the ID. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be enough. Yeah. So let's let's try that. Let's try uh, you know uh, something. So um, test pipe. Oh, let's we we don't even need that, do we? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. No, we we first have to create an async um, scope. Yeah, and let's try mapping. Yeah, filtering and mapping. Okay, so we, we will we will call it twice with one and two. So console log. Yeah, console log. Uh, await a with one, and then console log. Await a with two. Okay, and here we want we want to do <laughs> yeah if if v um, is dis divisible by two. So it's even. We want to pass it to another, uh, to the other function in the queue. And the other function in the queue is going to be a map, which is going to um, make it double. Okay, so v times two. So here, when we pass one, nothing should be. You know, we 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 should get undefined. And here we should get four. So let's try that. I don't know if, if it's going to work, you know, first try. Um, wait, do I have English? Yeah. What? Yeah, and I actually didn't want this. I wanted this. Yup. Okay, so um, it's node source index JS. So let's see. Yeah, we we do have an error. Uh, okay. So a is not a function. Ah, uh, interesting. Interesting. So let's. Oh yeah. No no no. Wait. Oh yeah, we we're not returning this one. Okay. Uh, I must have removed this by accident. So let's do it again. Okay. We are not getting anything. Well, that's interesting. Huh. We are not getting anything, which means that the resolve doesn't get called. Hmm. Okay. Let's let's just uh, log it log it here. So we we do get value one. We do get value one. But then nothing really happens. Well, that's interesting. Get in the V here. Resolving. Yeah, and, and let's try I and M. I want to see what that is. So this is the first one, and the maximum is. One. Hmm. Yeah, then what? Okay, and then it calls the next function. And that calls the next. Okay. Let's let's try let's try 
Um, just uh, mapping the value first, okay? Oh yeah, okay, so that, that works. We get two and four, so that's, that's right. That's right. Interesting. So what's wrong here? Yeah, okay, um, I want to see what value we're getting here. So let's take a look. Okay, it's one. Okay, we're getting one. That's all right. But the second one doesn't get called. Well, that's weird. Okay, but this one works. So for some reason the the other line doesn't get executed. That's really weird. So let's do let's do it like this. So A or first Second. Oh yeah, m maybe it's because it never it never really gets resolved, so it's forever pending. That might be the case. I don't really know why that would be the case. Huh. Okay, but that 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 kind of makes sense. Okay, so let's let's try this again. Oh yeah, and I want to lock both of those at the end. For a second. Hmm. Okay, now I don't really know what's happening. We're getting value 1. I is minus 1. And the maximum is 1. Here we do plus plus I. Which is 0. So we get the... We get this one. And we pass in the value next an ID. And that gets called. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it never gets resolved because we we don't we don't call it here, right? Yeah, we we don't call it here. So it gets. Yeah. What way? Okay, I, I have to have some kind of a logical error here. Okay, we we say next, it goes through here, this is false, then it calls the first one. We log it here, which is alright. And then we do this. Are we saying, okay, next is 
V and if not then we don't do anything huh so then it just it just hangs here you know not, nothing really happens wait what hmm Does anyone know why, why this doesn't work? I feel re really dumb right right now for not seeing it. No, I check undefined. Then I do this. Okay, what I what I think has to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. What has to happen, yeah, that's, yeah. What has to happen is that we have to, um, um, you know, call next with undefined. That's why we have this line here. Yeah, I've, I completely forgot, yeah. So actually, actually, the implementation here should be that we call the next uh, either way, um, but we need to resolve it, right? So we have to call the next again, but um, we then check for undefined and resolve it. Yeah, okay. So what we need to do here is... Yeah. Um, 2 equals 0, then... We pass the value, and if not, then we pass undefined. Yep. Okay. Okay, now, now I'm pretty confident that this is going to work. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Now, the first one is undefined. Which is right, because, um, you know, one... Um, one is odd. It's it's not even. So that makes sense. That's that's the result that we wanted. Great. Okay, I can remove this. And nice. Yep. Okay. So that's that's the pipe. Um, is everything clear? Um, does everyone understand how the pipe works now that it's implemented? I think the next step will be to create, you know, map, filter, and if else, and maybe the db the debounce. And then on top of that, we are going to create the actual event emitter. Okay, so let's let's start by creating map. So const map equals um, function. Let's just f, and we are gonna. Um, return v and next. Okay, so we we was we 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 return this this function basically, and we initialize it with this custom custom logic here. So um, what we do is just f v. So that's our map. Now let's do filter. We want a predicate. The next, and let's push next value, which is going to be um, predicate v, v or undefined. Yep. Let's put these on on a different line like this. Okay, and then we have 
if else where we need to pass in three things which is the predicate um then the a and b let's call it a and b or f1 and f2 yeah and what we are going to do here is that we again need v and next and we know that we want to call next with um so if predicate with this value then what we do we return f1 into which we pass the value or the f2 again into which we pass the value so it's basically filter but we can provide the functions here and i think we can actually implement um filter with if else yeah so yes yeah, so um let's do this so filter is actually if else um where we have wait um filter okay so we still need the predicate so here we have the predicate and we pass the predicate and here in this case if it's true then we want to just pass the value right and if it's not true then we don't care about the value and we want to return undefined Yeah, so I think two, like, most basic functions here is map and if else. And anything else is just going to be an abstraction built on top of these. I still don't, don't, don't know how I feel about the naming here, the, the if else. I don't know if it should be named something different. But I mean, if else kind of makes sense because you're don't doing, you know, this or this. So this is if, this is else. Um, yeah, but I, I I don't know how I would do, um, logic that is like if, else if, else if, else if, you know, the, like, and, and a number of else ifs and then else, or we, we might not even need else at the end. So we might come up with a different structure or, or, or a function there. Yeah, this could maybe be called either yeah so based on this select either this or this yeah i think either is is better yeah i, I don't like when function when you know such a simple functions have two two words in them so either either sounds a bit better yeah either okay yeah I like that okay so we have map either filter um, do we need anything else oh yeah uh, and now the debounce the debounce is going to be a bit more involved uh, so let's give it some space and we also need um, this constant called timeouts which is going to be um a map because like i said before uh we don't really want this to be an object because um um the objects shouldn't grow you know in time or over over time sorry they shouldn't grow over time okay so we want to debounce it uh, we provide some uh, number of milliseconds and then what we do next is again v next and now we need the id uh, 
All right. So when I call the debounce here, um, it should first of all try to remove or delete the current timeout. Um, yeah, it, right now I, I would be really, uh, I, I would really welcome you know TypeScript here because I could I could say what the actual type of the value would be here. But basically, it's going to be a function, and the, the function is is going to be a stop function, which is going to do um, two things really. So let's let's just keep in mind that it's going to be a function. So what we do here is that we say, okay, timeouts, get it by the ID, and if you know it is callable, then call it. So if there is a stop function under this ID, then stop it. Because how debounce works is that you have, um, you know, every time you call debounce, it sets a time, it, it's, well, first of all, it clears a timeout, the previous timeout, and then sets itself as a new timeout. And if in that um, time window, you don't call it again, which would, you know, uh, do uh, this deletion and recreation again, then it's just a, a timeout. So after the set um, uh, the set number of milliseconds, the thing gets executed. So basically, you can think about debounce as waiting for this number of milliseconds of idle time. Okay, so if nothing happens f uh, for this amount of milliseconds, then only after that, I'm going to execute whatever is in here. So that's another way of, of uh, thinking about that. Okay, so now what we need to do is to create the stop function. And then we need to assign the stop function to the timeout. So we need to set it. Yeah, and I don't think, yeah, I don't think we need to actually um, assign it to a variable. I think we can just pass it here. I don't think we're gonna need it. You know, the, 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 the reference. Okay, so here, what we do is we set this to... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Well, if we set it just to a function, the function will not get executed, but we, we need to somehow initialize initialize the, the timeout, right? Well, either way, there should be a timeout inside. We set the timeout. this number of milliseconds then we do clear timeout all of the timeout and then we say okay next value yeah yeah okay so we want to initialize it here right we want to we want to initialize it here so we in initialize it here and we pass the stop function which is going to basically do clear timeout of this locally initialized timeout and thanks to this being a lambda function um, uh, we can access the outer scope so we basically also pass the scope with this function. So we clear the timeout of this timeout. 
yeah i think that's it yeah so we when it's called we clear it which means we clear the locally initialized timeout um and then we initialize the local timeout with set timeout of the number of milliseconds inside of which we clear the timeout when you know it gets executed and we pass uh or we we call the next function let's try that and and also let's rewrite um these uh these inline functions into the helper functions so let's try to debounce it for 250 milliseconds then um we want to filter it and here we want to filter it based on it being um even or not and then when it gets through or if it gets through, we want to um, do uh, value times two. Okay, so now that's much more readable. And to test the debouncing, we actually need to create an interval. So let's create an interval. Um, which is going to be every... Yeah, let's do 200 and let's call it after, you know, uh, we, we call it every 100 milliseconds and the debounce is 200 milliseconds, which means that um, all of the calls up until the last one are going to get cancelled. And then after um, 200 milliseconds, of calling the last function, it's going to actually call the next function in here in the pipe. I hope that that made sense. And we want don't and we don't want to make it um, infinite because then nothing would ever get called, and we would uh, run uh, out of memory eventually. So we want to um, check for for some maximum number and increase the, the, the i. So let's do plus plus i, let's do interval equals to this, then if um, i equals to nine, so we will um, call it 10 times, then we clear the interval okay and if not then we want to call the i the the a with i and now we can get rid of these and also this okay and what we want to do here because we, we can really um, await inside the clear interval and we don't really want that want that even if we could so we just want to do then console lock which means that we are going to uh, lock uh, whatever value we get when this finishes with either undefined or the value itself okay so what we should see here right now uh, when I clear it uh, after I um, execute it, is going to be um, nine undefined. Okay, nine times we, was, we, we we are going to see undefined, and then we are going to see nine. Yeah, okay, so we need to make it ten. Okay, so we will see ten times undefined, and then um, the eleventh line will be twenty. So now nothing. Oh, okay, so we don't even see anything. Yeah, we don't even see anything. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. 
wait, and wh why why don't we see anything? Does it just hang in there, like forever? You know the 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 past ones. The the zero to to nine. Okay, that's that's weird. Wait. Um, so what we do here, uh, we call this. Next, we we call it, which means we execute this. So we get it. We do timeout. Yeah, we, we, we can't really... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I, I know what's wrong here. Um, when we stop it, when we stop it here, we want to um, let the previous scope that it has ended with undefined. Yeah, so what we want to do is call next, which is... Uh, you know, this scopes next. It's not the next that um, is going to be used by, like, the, the current uh, debounce execution or scope. So now we want to just pass undefined here, meaning that, that this gets skipped. This particular execution gets skipped. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's that's exactly what I, what I thought would happen. Yeah, so th this is... This is right. This, 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 this is all right. We get an undefined. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten times. And then the eleventh is the actual result, which is the filtered value and map value. So, yeah, uh, ten is divisible by two. And then uh, we do ten times two. Uh, ten times two is twenty. Yeah. Okay, so now the debounce works. Um, and the pipe works. So now we can finally um, implement the event. So let's do that. Okay, so const event equals something. And before we implement uh, event, we want to... Um, two symbols. So we want listeners, which is a symbol. You know, a, a secret secret symbol. And then we want, um, well, let's call it function. Yeah, let's call it function. And it's going to be also a symbol. Okay, and now we want to return an object, which is going to use listeners here. And initialize it with null. Um, later on, we we will um, um, assign a new set here when we need to. But when we initialize the event, um, we don't really want to spend the CPU time and memory on creating a new set if we don't like actually know if it's ever going to be needed. So up until that point, when it's actually needed, we don't. We don't actually need it, so we won't create that. And then we um, we just pass the function here, and that function by default is going to be um, you know just just passing whatever value we got uh, through. Okay, so that's event. Oh, and we don't have music. Where's our music? Where's the music? No, we do have music. Okay. Then there's listen. So what we want to do inside listen is that we want event and the function. Yeah. Um, and here, this is this is the point where we actually make the event live like um like alive because up until that point there's no listener there's not even a set so we consider it to be 
dead or, or waiting to be initialized. Okay, so here we do listeners, and if it's not set, then we set it to an empty set. Um, and then we add the function in there. Um, and then we, what we want to do, we also want to um, return the unsubscribe function or stop listening function or whatever we, we want to call it. So what we do here is we do event listeners um, delete the function. Um, the the question mark here uh, it's it's here because we might clear the the event um, before we unsubscribe here, so the listeners might be null again. So. Um, we just want to make sure that that's never a problem. So it gets called only if, you know, it is something that can be called or something that does have delete. Okay, um, and then what we do is we want to, of course, publish the thing. Or pu publish, publish the, the, fun uh, the value into the event. So we say event value. Okay, um, and this is going to be a bit more complex than, for example, the the listen listen function. So what we do here is that we want the mapped value, and the mapped value is the value that goes through the function here that we have provided um, you know when we when we were creating the the, the individual event so um, we do we do event function and we pass the value inside of that then what we do um, is that we check for undefined because here we see that it might be undefined. And actually the, the function, it is or it can be um, an async function. So we also have to make the publish async. So we await for the value. Then we check if the map value is not undefined. And in that case, um, in that case, we just go th over the listeners. So we say listener of uh, of event listeners values. Um, yeah, and we might want to add another if here and check if event listeners are truthy because they might be null and we don't want to even try creating the map value when we know that it's going to be useless basically, right? So we check for listeners, we map the value. If the map, map value is not undefined, then we um, iterate over the listeners and then we um, we call the listener with the map value but that's not all because the listeners um, might be async yeah I think they, they might be async right yeah they might be async because they might be 
uh, or we, we might use pipe to define them or that, that's that's the way we want the library to be used. So most likely it's going to be async. So we want to await them, but we want to await all of them at once. And okay, so so the way we want to do it is that we want that we don't want to await one or the first one and then execute the second one and then the third one. We basically want to execute all of them and wait for all of them to be finished. Doesn't really matter if uh, they've been resolved or rejected. We just want to await them, all of them. Um, so what we do here is we create promises, which is going to be an empty array by default. Then we say promises push and we push this without evading it here. Okay, so we push the async function, not, not the return uh, value of that async function. And then what we do here is we await um, promise all settled. Um, the the difference between all and all settled is that all um, throws an error when some th when one of those promises also throws an error or uh, you know gets rejected, but we don't really care about that. So we want all settled. So it doesn't, you know, stop execution of uh, the next listener. Um, okay, so we want to promise all, await all settled uh, promises. Yep, that's what we want. Okay, um, and yeah, that's that, that 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 should be all. That should be everything. Okay, so now we can change the pipe here into a reactive event and we can actually listen to it. Okay, so let's let's change this. Um, I don't know, uh, num event. And let's say it's an event with this pipe as its... Um, basically mapping function okay let's uh, let's call it a mapping function and here we we, we still want to um, use the interval so we test the debouncing but we don't want to do it this way um, instead what we want to do is we want to publish the num event or we want to publish a value into that num event which is going to be the index um yeah here we, we don't really have to um await it or do then or catch or anything of that sort because um as you might have noticed uh where is it yeah here we are not returning anything you know, because we don't really have to return anything. It doesn't really make sense to, to return anything. And before we try to publish values into that number event, we want to also create a subscription. So I don't think we need to um, actually save the unsubscribe to anything, um, even though like in production that would be the right thing to do but here we, we don't really need that so let's just say listen we want to listen to the number event and here again we're going to use pipe so yeah um, we are going to get uh, we, we know that we are going to get the number 20 here so what can what can we do with number 20 um, let's create a filter Um, yeah, let's create a filter where we're going to check if the value is, um, smaller than 25, for example. So we know it, it goes through, uh, then we want to map it and we want to map it, um, into a string, let's say. 
So we map it into a string and then we want to create uh, or we want to do if else. And here what we're going to do is that we take the 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 first um, character. Okay, now, now it's now it's a string. So we we take the first character and we check if it's two. Uh, I mean, it's a string two. And if it is, then we are going to return a string saying that the number, whatever we passed in, um, starts with um, two. And if that's not true, so else, um, we say does not start with two. Okay, so now we have two different uh, uh, places where we can um, place our logic. Which uh, first one is here, where where we create the event. So it's a global logic of this event, or specific logic for um, um, all executions of that event. Um, then we have this specific logic for this. Um, listen, okay. So we, we, we might say, okay, um, uh, stop lis listening. Um, and here we have a specific logic for this stop listening uh, mm, subscriber. Let's call it that. Okay, and then we just publish the numbers. So here we should get uh, that 20 starts with 2. Then we... I'm, I'm, I'm going to raise this to be... Um, to be 19... No, 20. And we're going to get 40. So 40 doesn't start with 2. So uh, we should get this one. Oh, and it's not if else. Yeah, I forgot. It's either. Yeah, it's either. Uh, by the way, uh, we are getting this event is deprecated um, because event used to be, I think, a native API and it's still somewhere in the types. So that's why we're getting this um, message, but uh, it shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, Alex, <laughs> hello, my friend. Yeah, hello. How you doing? Okay, so... I hope it's going to work. I'm not sure, but it but but, but it, it should. So now we're waiting. Okay, so nothing nothing happens. And now I'm wondering why. Oh yeah, yeah, true, true. Um we are not logging anything, right? We're not logging anything. We we are we are listening, but we're not logging anything. So what we want to do is that we want to lock something in here. Um, yeah, I think we will have to also call next inside of that lock. So let's create a helper function for that. So let's say log. Um, the lock is going to be some kind of function. We don't care about that. And what we do is we basically... Oh, yeah. Okay, so logging is basically mapping. Yeah, it's basically mapping. Okay, so let's let's just create an alias. And let's say that log is actually a map. Yeah. You know, here we don't really um, care about... Yeah, okay, but no, 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 no. It's not an alias for a map. It's... Uh... Yeah, it's it's not actually because we want the function and then then we provide the function, but the function is going to be console log of that. So what we want here. Yeah, I think we can just do console log. Can we do that? Yeah, I think 
I think this is. No, we want. Yeah, we we want to do. Yeah, we want value here, and we don't want to do console lock function with the value. Yeah. Okay. So down here, in our listen, what we want to do is we want to log, and we're just going to log whatever we get here, or we can uh, prepend it. Okay. So let's let's say log of the value. Uh, I'm doing nice. Uh, I'm all day snapchatting with one girl. <laughs> good, good luck with her, I guess. Okay, so what we got is log 20 starts with, tw with, with 2, which is exactly what we wanted, right? Yeah, great. Um... Even though I don't know where the undefined is coming from, where is where, where is it coming from? Oh yeah, yeah, my bad. Uh, we don't want this. What we want to do is return log of the value. Yeah. Okay. So. Now, now it's going to show just one message. Yeah, okay, so log 20 starts with 2. So that's that's what we wanted. And now let's change this to 20. I think it should be 20. No, uh, 19. No, what? 21? No, 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 I'm not sure. Wait. When I want to make it... What? Wait, it starts on zero, so 10 is actually 11. Yeah, it should be 20. Why doesn't it work with 20? Now that's... That's weird. Map. Yeah, let's go here and check the value. Yeah, and we, we even get 40, which is the correct value. 20, and then we get 20, 20, 40, 40, but then we get undefined. But then we get undefined. What? Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. What? It makes zero sense. Equals two. Yeah, that's... That's okay. Yeah, and, and we know that this gets executed. Huh. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's a filter. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I completely forgot. There, there's a filter that says if it's um, smaller than 25. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is what we should have expected so let's say it's 100 yeah let's let's push it a bit higher yeah okay and now we get log 40 does not start with two okay that's that's exactly what i was expecting so yay all right all right all right uh what else Filter do, um, filter, uh, filters. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, you, you have to provide a boolean here. And if it's true, then it goes to the next function. And that goes to the next function. And that goes to next function. And if there's no other function, then uh, it actually gets, you know, um, executed. But if this filter, the, 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 the function here, returns false, 
So if I were to provide, I don't know, 200, so 200 is smaller than 100, that's false, then none of these would ever get ex executed. So nothing nothing happens. Yeah, you, you basically get undefined as the return value of the pipe and the listen uh, or yeah, the, the, the publish actually where was the code? The publish makes sure that um, it doesn't get executed or that um, you know the, the listeners don't get executed. Yeah, so so here it's the mapped value. So you provide the value, and if it's undefined, uh, then not, nothing happens. If it's not undefined, then we notify the listeners of the map value. So I, I hope that makes it clear. Okay, and after, let's say, uh, huh, after, hmm. After 1100 milliseconds, we are going to stop listening. Okay. So, um, set timeout to 1100 milliseconds and we're going to call stop listening. So let's try that again. Yeah, and n nothing, nothing happens here. But wait, I think we should be getting a bunch of undefines. Yeah, no, 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 nothing happens. Yeah, 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 that's, that's true. We, we not, we are not logging the undefined. Yeah, that's true. Uh, for some reason I thought we are still testing pipes and not Evans. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, be because we've stopped listening before, uh, you know the debounce could actually do anything so let's get rid of the debounce for a second and let's try that again yeah okay so we get lock you know 0 4 8 12 and 16 uh, but if we were to um, um, comment this out so we never stop listening it goes to the 40. But we because we stop listening after 1100 milliseconds, we go only to 16. So yeah, I hope that that's also clear. Um, I mean, technically speaking, here, um, log should really be tap. Um, you know, in in uh, functional programming when you have pipe and you want to do something that doesn't manipulate the value which is going to uh, get pushed into the other or, 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 or the next function then you um, tap into the current value and you just pass it through but you do something in that tap, tap. and usually what you do in that tap is um, some kind of side effects so, for example, you would use it to lock. But I think we don't actually need the tap. I don't know. Um, well, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's let's create tap. Let's create tap. Um, so let's tap. Um, we are going to provide a function, tapping function, and it's still just a map still just a map and the map yeah this is this is actually not right because we are returning the res the the result of console lock console lock but that's not right we should be returning the the value here the v Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. 
Okay, so the value we 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 we, we take the value. Um. Yeah. Uh, what we need to do here, we take the value, we execute the function, and we return the value. So that's that's basically what tab does. So now log should be an abstraction um, that's based on tap. So it's basically a tap where the function is, but the function is um, console log of fv. Yeah. Okay, now, now it should work the same way. Yeah, it does. So that's that's great. Okay, so now the way we can use this is either you know lo log it with this special function, or if we want, if you don't want to use this special function, and we might do, we might want to do something else. Uh, but for now, let's let's basically copy uh, the function below here. Um, what we would do is this, right? So now we, we tap in into it, we, we are logging and the tap just passes the input as its output. So if, um, for example, I wanted to log here something different so let's just say uh, hello so after yeah but but we want to yeah we, we, we don't want that um <laughs> so let's do plus value plus value so we're going to parse the string as a number and log that Oh yeah, and we we get in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, we can do that. We can do that. So I don't know. Let's uh, let's do v split. Um. Yeah, like this. Yeah, great. So now we, we get in the message and then we are passing uh, what we got here as value to the other function. And in that other function, which is specifically for logging, um, we are returning the, sp the split of the value, which is this. Yeah, great. Okay. So that's that's about it. Uh, I don't I don't think I don't think there's anything else that I want to do today regarding this. I mean, we could be working on other helper functions, but I don't really know um, what other functions we should create um, because w mm, compared to uh, functional reactive programming. We don't, um, you know, the, the the events they don't remember the last value, so we can't really do uh, fancy stuff like um, uh, like uh, reducing, for example. Um, so that really <laughs> reduces the number of functions that we can use, and I don't really know what else we can do than mapping doing if else and filtering i guess we might implement um uh regex and some kind of switch i'm thinking about something like a switch but i'm not sure how that should work huh yeah or or option yeah it, it might be called option wait um, how do we how do we match in in rust because i i really like how uh, matching works in Rust, and I think we might use that that pattern of of matching. That that would be pretty nice. And what you uh, that's basically an, an abstraction above 
uh, or on top of um, if if else or or if else if else if else. So we might do that. So how does it how does it look? Um, so Rust um, match. I think it's match. Is it match? Yeah, it is match. Uh. So we match something and then we have these things. Okay, so I guess it's slightly similar to switch, but uh, the difference here is that we can have just, you know, static um, uh, values like here. Or we can have um, like an array of numbers or a range of numbers. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 using uh, the LibreWolf. I mean, I, I've installed it like five minutes uh, before I I went live, so <laughs> I'm not really using it, but. Uh, th actually, this is the first time I I've ever used it, but uh, I'll see. I'll see how how it goes. So what we want to do is match. Okay, so let's let's implement matching. I think that that's going to be fun. Oh, why didn't I have semicolon here? Okay, so either and I guess either then uh, could be implemented with um with the 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 match okay so let's do match so match equals something and that equals to v next and we're going to do something in, in here i think it's going to be a bit bigger than the other functions so i'm gonna uh space it out here so it's a bit more readable of course um before we um publish this library uh, i'm gonna clean the code code up and um rewrite it in typescript or let's say add types but right now we're just working with this one file Okay, so what what we want is an object of of options. I guess I can I can um I can call it all O S in options. Yeah, and what we want to do here Yeah, how how would I how would I actually use it? That's what I'm wondering right now. How would I use this? Yeah. I'm going to create match. And then what I want to do here is that yeah, I can I can match stuff like yeah, if it's 1 then do something. You know, if it's 2 then do something. And if it's default or, or if it's neither of those then do something else. I can do this with false um true that's cool, but here the match can do much more. We can match an array or uh, this, which is a bit problematic because because in objects we cannot really, you know, um, create key, uh, create function as in key, as a, as a key. So that won't work. So I'm wondering, how are we going to implement this? Hmm. Okay, other way of doing doing this is by using an array. So this is this is the first way of doing it and the other would be matching with array where we would have tuples so we have this tuple where we 
um, create a function that resolves to something. So we have um, a value, and let's say we have uh, one, two, three, four um, includes this value, then we are going to pass the value and do something. So I don't know, um, v times two. Um, if this doesn't return true, then we're going to try this. So if it's um, again divisible by two, then let's just pass it, or maybe let's let's do this. And default. So basically, this would be implemented like this. So when we get at the end, uh, we are, you know, 100% sure that this will go through. And if that's true, then let's say we just want to pass the value. Yeah, so which one are we gonna use? I mean, we might use both of these. Yeah, we might, we might use both of these. Yeah. We might, um, we might transform the object into um, an array with tuples. So what would happen is we would just take this and create and basically do um, v um, and v equals this one. So that's what it would get transformed into. And when it comes to the underscore, then that would be a special case. So I guess when you, because because this is kind of noisy, you know, this is kind of noisy. So we want to minimize uh, usage of of this use case. But if you if you really really need it, then we can of course use it. But if, if we don't need it, and we want to just match uh, simple values, simple primitives, then we can do it this way, which I think is much nicer. Um, I mean, uh, as opposed to Rust, we won't really be able to, I don't know, put dates here, you know, because dates are not a valid, um, object key. Um, why is LibreWolf better than Firefox? Well, uh, mainly because it's more secure and it's not, like, uh, connected with the with, with the Mozilla uh, company, you know. Um, so it's it's basically from what I understand, it's basically the same as um, I think it was called Unchromium or something like that, which is a Chromium, yeah, ungoogled Chromium, yeah. It's it's the same thing as ungoogled Chromium. But for Firefox, yeah, um, yeah, this is this is a Chromium without all the connections to Google, you know, and uh, the the LibreWolf. Do I do I did I say that right? Yeah, the LibreWolf is basically the same thing, but for Firefox, from what I understand. But I might be wrong. Okay, so let's use these two um, these two um, like APIs basically these two versions of APIs. So let's let's call this config or no we still we, we can still call it yeah uh, options yeah options that's better. Okay, so um, const array options is an empty array yeah let's 
Yeah, oh, okay. Maybe let's do it a different way. Uh, let's let's try this. Uh, array is array. Options. If it is indeed array, then we're going to just um, use that. If it's not, then we will create an immediately invoked function from which... Um, yeah, where, where, which is the place where we're going to create? The, no, 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 no. Let's create a special function for that. I don't, I don't like this. So const um, object options to array equals this um, options um, const array options there's going to be a little bit of duplication here that's why i wanted to do it in line but it doesn't really matter so object options to array options yep and here what we're going to do is i, I don't i don't know what's what's faster if uh if doing four in or Get in the keys with object keys and then looping through through that. But I'm just going to do going to use the for in. You like primogen? That was just going to do TypeScript to project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But thank you for comparing me with primogen. Uh, so const key in uh, in options. Yeah, and now, w w what do we want to do? Yeah, we want to create options. Uh, no, no, no. We want to push, 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 push. Yeah, fuck. We want to push a tuple where the first item is, yeah, the function. So we compare it to the key. And if... But that goes through then we just uh yeah we, we we have do we have yeah we have uh a function here so we just do opts key yeah we do it like this okay so now that it's when, when, when uh, after it gets transformed now we loop through it so yeah technically speaking this is nicer. Oh, you know, uh, subjectively speaking, this is nicer. But um, technically speaking, this is slower because we have to loop through the object and then we have to loop through the output of that looping. So we loop through it twice. Yeah, he's 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 pretty cool. Um, and we might want to. Um, cache the length here. I always like to do this. Uh, I know that the speed difference is usually like one to two percent from what I've seen, which is not a lot. But hey, when you when you can do it, then why not, right? So um, let uh, i equals zero until its length, and then do plus plus i. And what we want to do here Yeah I'm not sure how to handle this Yeah, that's true. That's that that's that's actually true. We we have to check if the key equals to underscore and if it does equal to underscore we want to um, do this, and if it's not, then we want to um, pass the 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 other one. Yeah. The thing is, when it comes to objects in JavaScript, um, the sorting of the keys might not be m might not match the the sorting. Uh, of the ob 
you know, like 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 the vi visual visual sorting, like the the way the way you you wrote it. So let's say you create an object where you have one, two, three, four, and so on. And then it might happen in some cases that when you loop through that object, through the keys of that object using for in or object keys, and then you loop through that, that you will get, I don't know, three, one, two, eight, and it's going to be in, in, in you know, sorted differently. So that might be a problem. That might actually be a problem here. Okay, so theoretically speaking, there is a bug here, which we might resolve later if if we find out that it's an actual bug, like it it actually happens, you know. Yeah. So if it doesn't get matched. What do we want to do if it doesn't match anything? If it doesn't match anything, then we want to return undefined, right? We, we, we just want to stop the propagation. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go, l l let's do it like this. Um, Uh, uh yeah so here's the predicate he's here's the function which equals to array options of i and if the predicate equals to true then we want to return that thing you know so yeah and we we, we don't even need to do this yeah i don't think we we, we have to do this yeah, maybe maybe just uh, just save this in two t as in tuple, and then if uh, the first thing in tuple, when called with the value um, equals true, but that's like silent. That's not. It's we don't write that basically. We don't have to. And if that's true, then we want to return the output of the second thing in tuple where we pass the value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've saved the T here because we reference it twice. So we don't want to um, index the the array twice. You know that 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 would be uh, that that would make it a tiny bit slower. So we want to um, optimize it here. We want to cache it. And if nothing nothing you know uh, gives us any 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 value, then we or no predicate returns true. Then we want to return undefined. So that basically stops. Yeah, and we don't want to... Yeah, that's true. We, we actually don't want to return anything. Yeah, that's true. I, for a second, forgot what we are even doing. We want to um, call next. Yeah, we want to call next. That's that's right. Okay, so we can make this even smaller then. Well, because for returning, you can do it this way. And now I don't know why, but uh, my Vim is lagging. That's why I'm really hyped for the new PC, because this, I suppose, uh, will w would not happen. So here we want um, undefined. Um, yeah, so that should be it. Will it help, help if I do this? Not really. Okay. So now we are transforming the object to an array. Um, we're going through that. We're checking if the... Um, 
the condition is true. If it is true, then we pass uh, the value of the value in in that key value pair in the object um, into the next function. If nothing, if no condition returns true, then we just pass undefined, which stops the propagation in the pipe. So now both of these um, these uh, styles or types of of you know uh, oh the, 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 these two th syntaxes yeah that, that's what I wanted to say these two syntaxes are both valid yeah okay great so now let's let's try to rewrite the if else with this or the the, the either sorry uh I I forgot that I renamed it why is it why is it I think it was no, it was down down below. Map. Wait, I thought it was here. No. Match. Yeah. Okay. E either is here. Okay. So, right now, uh, our either is just this simple simple function. Okay. So. Right now, we are going to be sacrificing performance, technically speaking, because, um, you know, th this, this is much simpler than, you know, executing all this. But for the sake of the size, which is what we really care here about, it's going to be better to use the match here. I think. I mean, we can always optimize, right? So it doesn't really matter. Hmm. So the way we would do this, I think, yeah, we don't we don't actually need the next. Yeah, yeah, we don't need all of this. And what we are going to use is the match. And I don't know wh why it's lagging. Wait, I'm gonna quit Vim. Yeah, I think it's it's laggy even here. And I don't know why. Wait. Oh, okay. So the whole Mac is lagging. Damn. Ah, uh, that sucks. Okay, so here, yeah, this is this is a bad experience. Yeah, it's it's throttling like crazy. Wait, let's let's try to look at the system monitor. And see what's wrong. Okay, so we're using about yeah that 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 that's not that's not too much, you know that's not too much. The the, the OBS is is the the one program that's taking most of the performance. But still, I have three gigs of RAM free, and there there are no temperatures for some reason. Yeah, there are no temperatures. So, so I don't know the the, t the temperatures, but I think that's the main cause. You know, it, it's it's passively cooled, so makes sense. So this is going to be the last thing because I don't really want to be programming with this laggy experience. You know, usually this doesn't happen, but uh, the OBS is really um, yeah, and and I'm, I think even. The camera is lagging, like the the whole experience is lagging. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So what did I want to do? Yeah. Uh. So there's predicate, and you do F1, and if that's not what you want to do, then um. You pass true, and then the F2. So I think that's how we uh, do either. 
Yeah. I think that's it. So let's uh, let's try. Let's try uh, executing that. Yeah, and it and it still still works. So does not does not. Yeah, um, and let's uh, let's get r let's get rid of this for a second, so we actually see the other branch here. So it does not, and it does start with two. Yeah, okay, and again, then this does not start with two. Okay, so that works. That's nice. Yeah, and let's uh, let's maybe give this. 1500 yeah so we actually see the other branch yeah okay yeah that's enough great yeah okay this what, what, what we've created here it feels really solid the the API it looks really nice really really nice so does anyone have any questions or suggestions or anything really I'm listening. But I'm re really um really proud of myself for creating this because it it really looks nice. I really really like it. But what's the date? Oh, it's it's 19th. Yeah. So, I should I should probably get my PC somewhere in, in, in the middle of the next week. I'm thinking like Wednesday, Thursday. So maybe on on Friday or, 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 or the next Saturday we might do... Well, not actually stream. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I, I would love to stream building the PC. But I also want to make a video of the build, um, which I want to... For which I want to, um, you know, um, do what, what, what what's it called? Well, I, I want to prepare prepare it. You know, I, I don't want to just have one static camera shot and 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 stuff like that. You know, I want, I want to play a little bit with the camera and and uh, and the scenes and make it a bit a ASMR and stuff like that. So yeah. So I can't really combine it, but I think we might do a stream of setting the PC up. That 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 might be a f uh, that might be fun because I I actually have this little um uh this little d device for screen recording. So I I basically put HDMI in and then HDMI out, um and I put uh, USB C in that. And put it into MacBook, and I can stream from the MacBook. But what you are going to see is the screen, and that screen can be of any any other computer. So I actually have every well, like all accessories or, or gadgets that I need for that to to like happen. So I think that that might be fun, you know, installing Arch Linux and and setting that everything up. Okay, so uh, I see there are no questions in the chat. So, yeah, so I think this is enough for today.